another Medicaid for Southern Europe. As that tracks over land, it certainly could see some tornadoes, some high waves towards the coast. Rainforests respond to future CO2. These 30 meters open air towers will be blowing CO2 at a higher concentration than we have now. And so too, the world of poetry. There's a risk of some brisker typhoons, difficult conditions on the roads, howling cyclone and drowning monsoon. It's Friday the 12th of November and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir and this is Weathersnap, an insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. The Mediterranean has been in the firing line for some unsettled and at times extreme weather in recent weeks. With more to come into this weekend, here's Deputy Chief Forecaster Adam Thornhill. The weather in the Mediterranean has been unusually unsettled and that's been to do with the pattern over the Atlantic. So uh, you may have noticed that we've had some relatively settled weather here in the UK over the last month or so, just being interspersed by the odd event. Uh, what that's meant though is the unsettled weather that would normally be streaming across us um, has uh, been forced further to the north and down through the central part of Europe. That's then led to a bit of a cutoff system in the Mediterranean, which has just kept allowing low pressure systems to to spiral and develop in the Western Mediterranean. Italy seems to have really got a lot of that. Cyprus just a couple of weeks ago, and then we're back here with another area of low pressure. What's happened up to this point? Where has the worst weather been? So certainly in the last week or so, we've uh, had a a low pressure which was named Storm Blast by the Spanish Met Agency. And that's been circulating around between the Balearics and Italy, leading to uh, a fair amount of rainfall uh, parts of Corsica, Sicily. What we're looking at over the next couple of days is for that to intensify as it uh, moves southwards. And that, again, is just being helped by um, a bit of a, a low pressure vortex sitting over the top, as it were. So there is a potential over the next few days for this low to turn into what is unofficially known as a Medicaid. So with the forecast going ahead, the areas which we're most concerned about and how strong are the winds going to be or is it more of a rainfall event? Yeah, so it's likely to be mostly a rainfall event, although strong winds will be an issue. Uh, Most of the strong winds are currently offshore, so not affecting any population areas. But uh, as mentioned, the uh, storm um, blast is currently sat just over the Balearics. And uh, as that spirals and slowly moves south, taking on warm core characteristics, we could see precipitation totals intensify, potentially leading to 100 millimetres a day or or potentially even up to 200 millimetres through the event uh, before it moves south towards Algeria and uh, and dies as we progress into the weekend. Anything verging on a tornado associated with this as well? So with these events we always get uh, quite large thunderstorms embedded and we're starting to see a really nice spiral in the cloud characteristics and with that there's always the potential certainly for water spouts obviously uh, mostly over a a maritime setting but uh, as that tracks over land it certainly could see some tornadoes some high um, waves uh, uh, towards the coast and, and as mentioned some quite high precipitation totals. Adam Thornhill thank you very much. And you can stay up to date with storms around the world on the Met Office Storms Twitter feed. Releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere to understand climate impacts wouldn't, on the face of it, make much sense. But that's exactly what's being done in the Amazon forests of Brazil right now. Using giant towers constructed in the tree canopy, the Free Air CO2 Enrichment, or Amazon FACE programme, will release carbon dioxide at future emissions levels and monitor the response of nearby fauna and flora. Earlier this week at COP26, climate correspondent Graham Madge discussed the project with Carlos Alberto Caseda, field researcher at the National Amazon Institute for Research. I understand that this project is a world first in looking at the Amazon forest in this particular way. Can you tell me a little bit more about how the processes will actually work, how you do this research? The Amazon face is the first face experiment ever happening in a tropical forest. So far, only in the temperate zones or agriculture or small scale experiments have been done outside of the tropical areas. So it's key to understand what is actually going to happen to the region that holds most of the carbon on the terrestrial biosphere. The experiment itself involves an open-air laboratory where we will install 
six study areas and each one of those having 30 meters diameter surrounded by self-standing towers. So these open air towers will be blowing CO2 at a higher concentration than we have now, something 50% higher, trying to understand what the climate of the next 30 to 50 years will be. So that's a window to take a look in the future and see what's going to happen with the forest. The idea is to examine how leaves will behave, how the nutrient mechanisms will happen in light of high CO2. For instance, we expect that high CO2 would increase photosynthetic rates. This extra carbon that the tree is getting could be used, for instance, for producing a greater growth rate, having bigger biomass in the Amazon. So a substantial carbon sink could happen. Uh, it could also mean that the trees could uh, use this extra carbon to fight for more nutrients, giving it to fungi, to mycorrhizas, or just making more roots. So we, we really need to understand detailed ecological processes to understand how this how forests will behave in the future. You know, so when a hotter climate comes, when a drier climate comes, is this extra CO2 giving it capacity to survive? Does it increase the forest resilience? Because what actually happens in the Amazon forest may be, you know, the key to understand if we have the rainforest or not. Carlos Alberto Caseda. While much activity at COP26 has focused on science and government negotiations, other initiatives have explored the emotional response to climate change. One of those is the Hot Poets Project, in which a diverse group of poets have each been assigned to a different scientific organisation in order to learn more about climate and to produce a poem based on that experience. Here, poet Elvis McGonagall gives first impressions of visiting the Met Office and his take on how climate change is presented in the work of writers and performers. My name is Elvis McGonagall. I'm a stand-up poet, which means I do a lot of live gigs. Um, the kind of work I do generally is satirical poetry, so it's a mix of stand-up comedy and verse. Long foretold, long last. Short notice, soon past. First rise, after low, foretells, stronger blow. I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't, I didn't think there'd be <laughs> people in lab coats and goggles rushing around. <laughs> Speaking to people who are steeped in what is going on with the weather and know what they're talking about, it's obviously way more complex than anything I've tried to address before. As we head through the century, there's a risk of some brisker typhoons, difficult conditions on the roads, howling cyclone and drowning monsoon. I guess swathes of the public have been in, no, about active denial, it's just that not engaged with it. But to me, it seems we've reached a point where you have to be engaged with it. You have to, because it's going to affect the way you're living. It's going to affect the way all of us are living. Watch out for waves of molten mad heat if you're going out and about. A blazing furnace of forests aflame and the chance of a dust-dry drought. It's not going to work if you're, if you're shouting at people and haranguing them, uh, even if they, sometimes people have, will enjoy a piece even though they profoundly disagree with your opinion, if it's couched right. In live sets, I used to do a little four line poem uh, called Global Warning, which went from memory, recycle, go green, save the planet. I think I did it at Glastonbury. Recycle, go green, save the planet. Don't burn holes in the sky. Stop the ice caps melting or those wee Arctic monkeys will die. I think they may have been playing Glastonbury that year. And that would lead into a, a piece that was meant to be much more serious. Potential for torrential deluge, pushing on through the evening rush hour, thunderous roaring of wrathful skies, pouring down their sulphurous showers with contagious fog of denial and gathering clouds of despair, got a damarungs in the wind, a last gasp of breathless hot air. And you can hear the Hot Poets Project by visiting www.hotpoets.org. Now, is he hot? Well, I'll let you decide.
but he certainly has a way with words. It's Alex Deacon with the outlook for the next few days. <laughs> I'm not sure about hot, Claire, but I was emotional listening to that poetry. I was lucky enough to be in the Science Pavilion at COP when that science event was on, and I would urge people to, to go back and listen to that again if you can. It should be on the YouTube Science and Services channel. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Let's get on to the weather for this weekend. Most places actually having a dry and fine weekend. Friday sees a low pressure sitting across the country, bringing blustery showers. But overnight on Friday, that low fills and slips away and high pressure builds in behind. Now it's not going to be completely dry or completely sunny. There will uh, be fairly cloudy skies across the UK on Saturday morning and still a few showers which will at times graze the east coast of England. So East Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, Norfolk in particular seeing showers on Saturday. But apart from that most will be dry and it should brighten up and um, quite a few spots seeing some spells of sunshine poking through by the afternoon. Temperature-wise, perhaps not quite as mild as it has been, but still generally above average at what, 11 to 13, maybe 14 Celsius if we see some sunshine across the south. And the winds will be lighter than Friday. By Sunday, not a great deal has changed. There's the chance, again, of one or two showers across East Anglia and perhaps the southeast, and maybe the southwest of England could see one or two showers as well. And there's a waving weather front near the far northwest. That could bring some rain to the Western Isles and perhaps the Highlands. But otherwise, most places dry. Again, a lot of cloud, but tending to get a bit brighter through the day with temperatures mostly 11 to 13 degrees. Where skies clear, it could turn quite foggy overnight, and that could be uh, particularly a bit of an issue as we head into the new week with Monday morning looking fairly foggy for some. But that's how the weather's looking. Thanks, Alex. Now here's Martin Bowles with last week's highs and lows. Here are the extremes for last week. Recorded between Monday the 1st of November and Sunday the 7th of November. In some respects, it was an upside down week with the warmest weather in northern Scotland and the coldest conditions in southern England. That highest temperature of the week was 15.3 degrees Celsius at Drumna Drocket in Invernessshire on Saturday. The lowest temperature was minus 4.9 degrees Celsius at RAF Benson in Oxfordshire in the early hours of Friday. The largest daily rainfall was also in northern Scotland on Saturday. Castley in Sutherland recorded 49 millimetres in 24 hours. The longest daily sunshine was 8.8 .8 hours at Shoebury Ness in Essex on Friday. Thanks, Martin. Well, that's it for this week's Weather Snap. I'm Claire Nazir and the editor is Adrian Holloway. To finish off, here's a few more thoughts on climate from Elvis McGonagall. Fitzroy's forecast. Hurricane, force 12. Take heed, avoid grief and mourning. Steeple drenching Atlantic storm. This is a Met Office warning. Words to the wise from a time to come for the wrecked Royal Charter. Too late. Ship ahoy, turn tempest-tossed toy, full fathom five lay its briny fate. And now those same seas are rising, the mercury soars ever higher. Ancient glaciers weep icy tears, our home is a building on fire. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office.